Do you desire to become a cloud architect or a solution architect? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to discuss how to go from engineering roles to architect roles. See, I have so many people that come to me and say, Mike, I'm a cloud engineer. I'm a network engineer. I'm a software developer. I'm a database administrator. I'm a sysadmin and I want to become a cloud architect. Should I get more certifications? And I say, well, no, no, no. Let's figure out what exactly the career you want is and let's talk about the skills that are necessary to get there. And if so, we'll gain some of the appropriate certifications and we'll remove some that don't belong there. And I'll explain to you why we have to do this. And I learned this lesson very early on in my youth. In my youth, I was a hardcore network engineer. My CCI number is 7417, and I like to get geeky and down and dirty on the tech. I still do, but I don't get to do it in my job. And I used to notice the uh, network architects would come in, nice suits, walk and talk, charm, charisma, executives. And they didn't seem to know that much about the tech. And I used to think, how can these lightweights be doing these designs? And why are they getting paid so much more than me as a network engineer? And then I realized something. After I made some mistakes, which is why I made this video. So I kept thinking, wait, to get to this architect, this almost superhero status in the company, I had to get more certifications. So I did, I got certifications, 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 and I got more and more of a techie. And the more certifications I got, the leadership was saying, Mike, you know, there's something wrong here. I need an executive, not a techie. In fact, when I finally did get my architect job, my first few, I actually removed some of the certifications from my CV or resume. And I've been doing this ever since. And I've helped so many people get their first cloud architect job, their first solution architect job, their first enterprise architect job, their first network engineer job, or their first cloud engineer job. But it's all about training for this exact skills for the job. So why were the certifications not helping me? Why well, was getting to become a techie, 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 not building my network engineer career into a network architect career? And why when I changed this, did I instantly become a network architect? And why have I taken so many people and gotten them cloud architect jobs or solution architect jobs? I'm gonna give you the secret. The secret is it's what we actually have to do in our job. That's the key we have to do in our job. And later we'll talk about why I often remove certain certifications from people's resume when they want to get that first cloud architect job or solution architect job. And I don't want to go there just yet. Let's talk about the few things that go into the job. First, there's the brand. You know, when you think of a brand, whether it be a cloud architect brand, a solution architect brand, or a cloud engineer brand, there's a brand associated with this. And if you have a strong brand, you are much more likely to get hired. And part of that is making sure you've got the expert skills for your job and act with integrity, authenticity, consistency, and responsibility. But let's talk about why cloud architects and cloud engineers are so different, and it all comes down to focus. The focus of the cloud architect or solutions architect is to improve their customer's business performance. I'm gonna say this again. The focus of the cloud architect or the solution architect is to improve the customer's business performance with technology. This is digital transformation. Digital transformation is the cloud architect's job or the solutions architect job. So if the main focus on the cloud architect or the solution architect is to improve business, I hope you can start to see why getting engineering certifications are not necessarily so helpful. But we're gonna talk a lot about this because there's a big difference with the cloud architect versus the cloud engineer. The cloud architect must focus on the business and the cloud engineer must focus on the tech. And unfortunately, having better engineering skills does not teach digital transformation or business transformation. So automatically, we've got a cloud architect, cloud engineer skills mismatch. The cloud engineers need to be tech, 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 tech. But the cloud architect or the solution architect or the enterprise architect needs to be business executive plus tech, and it's a different kind of tech. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's analyze the skills of each career. The cloud architect is 100% focused on business. And in most cases, the cloud architect or solution architect will never touch the technology. These are not hands-on positions. These are leadership positions. So to become a cloud architect, these are the things we're going to be doing in our jobs. And I'm going to tell you what it requires. We're going to be interviewing the client, including the CEO, CFO, CTO, CIO, et cetera, et cetera, which means we must have stellar communication skills and something that's called CXO relevancy, or the understanding and knowledge how to be relevant to the C-suite. Now, as architects, we don't touch the tech, but 
we will have to do some form of proof of concept testing and baselining of the organization systems. And who does that? The really technically smart cloud engineers. So we're going to have to lead a team of engineers that are going to do proof of concept testing and baselining the organization systems. After we meet with a client, we figure out what their business requirements are, we're going to have to design an architecture. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Most architectures take a team. So when I meet with a client, as soon as I find out what their business requirements are, the first thing I do is go back to my company and build a team of the 30 to 50 people that are necessary to design the architecture. So I have to have some really good leadership skills for this. And I also have to have some good sales skills. So I can go back to my management and say, I need these three people from your team, these three people from your team, and these three people from your team, which means I have to build a business case and justify why to the management of my organization I need these people. Now next, we architects, whether it be cloud architects, solution architects, enterprise architects, we're gonna be responding to requests for information, requests for proposal, requests for quotes. So that means we must ha know how to write and respond to things in an executive concise format. Also as a cloud architect or a solution architect, we're gonna be presenting at conferences and working at conference booths. So stellar presentation skills are critical for this job. Now we're also gonna be selling to the customer, which means sales skills are critical for this job. We're gonna be presenting at executive briefings, which again means extremely good communication skills. We're gonna be writing thought leadership documents, and you know, we're also gonna be entertaining clients, so you know, your social skills, your ability to read a room, et cetera, this is big for the job. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's 60 to 70 to even potentially 80% of the job is just those things right there. Now the rest of what we do is system design. Now system design is creating the technology blueprint, the map of how the tech will improve the business performance. So what is this tech that we're talking about? Well, if you're a cloud architect or a solution architect, what we do is we take the stuff from the network and the data center to the cloud, which is nothing more than a rented virtual data center. Once we get rid of the silly marketing names of the cloud, it's just another data center, that's it. So if a cloud architect doesn't touch the tech, is configuration, coding, scripting, or Terraform knowledge help out the cloud architect or solution architect? No, not at all. In fact, the more of this you have on your resume, the less relevant you'll be to the architect world, especially the hiring manager who's looking for a digital transformation specialist, not a techie. As you realize this, please note that hiring managers don't want a techie. I speak to them constantly. I speak to recruiters constantly, and they all say, Mike, I love your program for the following reason. You don't just create techies, you create people with business acumen, leadership commu skills, communication skills, CXO relevancy, business acumen, et cetera, et cetera. So whether you train with us or on your own, make sure that's your focus if you wanna be a solution architect or a cloud architect, not sysops or devops or Python coding or development. That's not our job, that's somebody else's job. You see, we cloud architects focus on design, how the parts fit together to maximize business value. So for the solution architect or the cloud architect job, this means knowing how the things work, not how, how to configure things. So what are those things that we need to know how they work? The things that we're gonna use to put together in our beautiful end-to-end -end architecture, our end-to-end -end system design. Well, for the cloud architect, it's BGP. It's IP addressing, subnetting, supernetting, route summarization, etc. It's NAT. One-to-one -one NAT, one-to-many NAT, static NAT, dynamic NAT, and PAD. What else? It's switching, which means VLANs, VLAN tagging, VLAN trunking, spanning tree, rapid spanning tree, etc. It's WAN technologies such as SSL-based VPNs, IPsec-based VPNs, private lines, Ethernet over MPLS, software-defined networking, and SASE. Of course, there's some basic networking protocols such as DNS, DHCP, ARP, proxy ARP, that kind of thing. Now, the rest of the things that a cloud architect needs to know how to design and work with is server virtualization and containers and container orchestration and storage, block storage, object storage, file storage, load balancers like network load balancers, application load balancers, when you need to stack them and how you tune the performance of them, databases, relational databases, no SQL databases, and of course, in the security end, next generation firewalls, not necessarily the cloud native ones, but next generation firewalls, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems, VPN concentrators and business applications such as ERP and CRM systems and how they can improve the business. These are cloud architect skills. And that's what it takes to get a great cloud architect job or solution architect job. Now, what about the cloud engineer? Because if you train to be a cloud architect, you can't get a cloud engineering job because it's different skills and you've got this conflict over here. The cloud engineer is a deep technology professional. The cloud engineer is the critical person that takes the designs from the cloud architect, solution architect, or enterprise architect and builds them and makes them in reality. So the cloud engineer therefore must understand how the components work, 
not just how to configure them, how they work. So this is deeply different than what's covered in something basic like the AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional. That's the name of the service and how to configure the service. Engineers, the deep knowledge of how does it work? Because you can't tune something if you don't know how it works. Because the engineers are going to be involved in tuning the system, how to build the system. So they need lots of good hands-on configuration skills. CLI, Management Console, etc. The cloud engineer is a builder, right? And most of the systems on the internet are going to be Linux. So the cloud engineer needs to have extraordinary good Linux engineering skills. The cloud engineer is going to be forced to do automation because, you know, we're dealing with big projects. So that means Python scripting, Bash scripting, and Terraform as infrastructure as code. So as you can see, the, the cloud architect's job revolves around design, present, and sell, and digital transformation. And the cloud engineer's job revolves around tech and building, 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 building. So what's really the difference between the cloud architect versus the cloud engineer? It's our focus. Our focus will determine what are the right skills for our job. Don't make the mistake most people do. Don't try to become a cloud architect by doing cloud engineering courses because it's not going to work for you because it's a different job. And if you're a cloud architect and you desire to be a cloud engineer, you're going to need special training too because a cloud architect's job and a cloud engineer's job are so very different, you need a different skill. So we strongly recommend train for your career, train for your job and nobody else's job for maximum success. If you'd like to become a cloud architect or solutions architect and you'd like to get that first cloud architect job or solutions architect job, we recommend our cloud architect career development program, which the link is in the description below. And if you want to get your first cloud engineer job, we recommend our cloud engineer career development program. Again, the link is in the description below. Two programs designed for two separate wonderful careers designed exactly with everything you need to get to your goals. This is Michael Gibbs. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in another video coming very soon. Take care, everyone. Thank you.